here I've got the LaSalle's resonance tube. Now I should point out that I'm using the low impedance eight ohm output on the SIGGEN, and that's really important for this apparatus. So there's a few different experiments that you can do. You can look at closed tubes, you can look at open tubes, and you can find the different resonant modes either by fixing the frequency or by fixing the length. So if you fix the frequency, you need to alter the length of the tube using the plunger. Um, and then if you fix the length of the tube, you need to alter the frequency that you're putting into the tube using the SIGGEN. The other thing that you can do is Kunt's tube investigations. So that is where you introduce some cork dust into the tube and you look for those striation patterns. I am going to run through each of those experiments so you have a bit of an idea of how you can use this apparatus in your classroom. First off, what I'm simulating here is an open tube. So by definition, an open tube is a tube that's open at both ends. Now, if I shimmy this down a little bit, hopefully you'll be able to see there's nothing in this end, it's open. And then on the other end, you can see that I've got the speaker. Now, you might think, well, doesn't that mean that this is a closed end? But there will be an antinode at this end, so we are essentially simulating an open tube. So the formula for an open tube is F equals NV all over 2L, where F is the frequency in hertz, N is any positive integer, V is the speed of sound in air in meters per second, and L is the length of the tube in meters. What I would do is I'd take that formula, put it in Excel, and create a lookup table. So for every value of N, so any positive integer, one, two, three, four, five, you have an associated frequency. So that will give you a theoretical value of each resonant frequency that you should be able to find using the SIGGEN. So let's have a go at finding one of those resonant frequencies. And we'll know that we're hitting resonance when the volume gets really loud at a certain frequency. So I'm gonna ramp up the amplitude on the SIGGEN and then start sweeping. about here so I reckon it's about there and this tells me that the frequency is 828 Hertz so if I look over to my lookup table and see what the closest frequency to that is what value of n I've got I can see that, what did I say it was? 828. So the closest one to that in my lookup table is 865 hertz, which should be N equals five. So this should be my fifth harmonic. You can continue that investigation by sweeping through the full frequency range and finding each of those resonant modes at each volume maxima. And then you can plot a graph of frequency on the y-axis against N on the X, which you'd get from your lookup table. Uh, that would give you a gradient of V over two L so that you can use that plot to work out a measured value of the speed of sound in air. Moving on to closed tube investigations. So a closed tube by definition is a tube that's open at one end and closed at the other. So we are saying that this end of the tube is open where it's got the antinode and this end of the tube is gonna be closed by introducing the plunger. So let's have a go. So my plunger is now in the end of the tube and it's at its minimum penetration depth. So what I'm gonna do now is increase the amplitude on the SIGGEN and sweep through the frequencies until I find another resonant mode. about there. So I know that I'm at a maximum now, so I'm going to get my whiteboard pen and just mark the position of the plunger on the tube. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plunge through the length of the tube and every time I hit a maximum, I'm going to make another mark on the tube at those locations. Now it might be easier on your ears to pinpoint the minima, um, so do whichever you find easiest. So again, I'm going to crank up the amplitude and start moving that plunger.
is four markings on the tube of where those maxima occur. So let's have a think about that. Each of these are a maximum. So we are going from peak to trough, back to peak, and then back to trough again. So we've got a total of one and a half wavelengths in that length. So if I get to my measuring stick and measure how long that distance is, I get it to be approximately 66 centimetres. Now, we can use the equation uh, lambda equals the speed of sound in air over the frequency to get a value of what our wavelength should be. So, we know that the speed of sound in air is 346 metres per second and the frequency we can get off the SIGGEN, which it says is 777.9 hertz. So if we do the maths there, we can work out that the theoretical wavelength should be 0.447 metres to three significant figures. Now, if we take that measurement of 66 centimetres, convert that into metres to get 0.66, and then divide it by 1.5 for the total number of wavelengths that we've got, we get a value of 0.44 metres. So super, super close, and we have nailed that measurement of the wavelength. Now we've just done that for one frequency, but you can do that for several frequencies and prove that that relationship holds across the spectrum. So there is another way of measuring the wavelength of the sound wave, and that is using this guy, the acoustic probe. So this is an optional accessory for the resonance tube, and you get the probe and you also get this little box with it as well. So you can see that there's terminals on here to connect to an oscilloscope. So what you would do is you'd introduce the probe into the tube, and as before, every time you go through a maximum, which you won't be able to hear, this unit doesn't have a speaker on it, you'd have to look at the trace on the scope and see where it comes to a maximum. So every time you hit a maximum, you mark it on the tube and then you just do exactly the same as you did before. Use those markings to determine what the wavelength is. So that will make your result a bit more quantitative and again, take your method to the next level using an oscilloscope. Now, the last thing to do is the Const tube demonstration. So for that, I need to remove the plunger and get some cork dust. So let's do that. So I've taken the plunger off the tube and here is my cork dust. Now you can either buy this or you can make your own simply by getting a wine cork and rubbing it against some sandpaper. That's how I made this and I collected it in a little bag. So I'm going to put this in the tube and I'm going to take the sound wave generator off the end of the tube because I don't want any dust going in that. So let's do that. So I've got a reasonable amount of dust in here now, so I'm going to reattach the plunger at one end to make sure no dust flies out, and I'm going to reattach the speaker at the other end so that we can put some sound waves in there. So plunger on the one side and sound wave generator on the other side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll the tube slightly so that the cork dust comes up the sides of the walls. Now, even though the cork dust is quite light, it's still quite a lot of mass for the sound wave to get moving. So we're just gonna help it on its way a little bit just by rolling the tube. Right, let's see if we can get anywhere with that. Now, we know that the resonant frequency of this length was about, what did I say, 777 hertz. So I'm gonna make sure that the SIGGEN is back on that frequency and then fine tune it just to make sure we are still at a maximum. I can see that this is already doing what it's meant to so I'm going to grab the camera and bring you down here so you can see what I'm seeing. 
these are the locations in which the dust has settled from where I had it before. So you can see there's three areas of striation patterns across the tube. Now, this is the current setting on the SIG Gen. We're at 776.9 hertz. And then if I ramp up the amplitude again and have a look at the striation patterns, you can see what's going to happen. So I will go over here and then ramp up the amplitude. you have it some awesome examples of the great physics you can do with a resonance tube thanks for watching